yeah, we're starting soon. Um, there's my contact if you wanted to note down that and ask me any questions at all. And um, there's a link on Eventbrite. You can't click on that actually because it's a shared screen. Uh, but uh, it's on Eventbrite. And if you search on my name, you can find out about all of my coaching sessions because with all good traditions, this is a free webinar. And I promise you, that you will get some real gems from this, okay? Um, this is a free one, but then it's obviously a preamble for you to do things in a bit more depth. And so I've got eight other coaching sessions and they're only 10 pounds an hour. Um, I know that's a lot of money for some people. For most people, it won't break the bank. So um, just to give you a taste of what I'm like and whether you like my style and then if you wanted to sign up to others that would be amazing It'd be lovely okay so um I think I'm going to start then folks it's really weird not being able to hear and see you because I don't know whether you're rolling your eyes or whether you're smiling and laughing and going yeah that's a good point I've no idea so I'm going to merrily carry on um so good evening, everybody, and welcome to this free, underlined live webinar, the top 10 essentials, how to sell your art and craft. And thank you so much for joining me, Dawn Birch James. Your microphones and videos are switched off. I'm sorry. So please stick to that as there are too many people and not enough time to cover all the points. Um, if your screen is appearing, then it might be an idea for you to hide your screen so it doesn't distract. And if you have a question, please type it in the chat facility because uh, we're going to copy and paste all of those questions. Um, and you'll find that, I do believe, by clicking on one of the dots on the top right hand of your screen. So we may have time to answer a few of these questions tonight and there will be a recording. So if your technology fails, you will be able to access that. Um, and please don't record this session um, yourself because it's going to be so brilliant and it's copyright. <laughs> just a little introduction to myself, just so that I can tell you why I'm qualified to speak to you about these things. Um, so I'm the founder and director of an online art and craft marketplace called Art and Heart, uh, artandheart.co.uk. Uh, uh, and I'm an art business coach. Now I have experience which spans about 35 years. Um, I originally started my career in teaching and training and for the last 20 have been involved in uh, the business of art and craft. Um, I launched the brand Art in the Heart in 2012, uh, which started out as a larger high street gallery and shop and it's now uniquely online. Um, I've been advising artists and makers for as long um, as that on matters to do with pricing, branding, profile writing, etc. Um, I write content, copy and articles, and I have a master's degree in arts market appraisal. Um, I think I'm artistic, <laughs> creative, and I have a very good eye for beautiful objects. Uh, I'm not an artist, um, and, but I believe, actually, it's this uh, which has been very useful, actually, for artists and makers I have advised. Um, so my free webinar here is a preamble to my eight coaching sessions, which cost only £10 each, and you can book those through Eventbrite. So that's my introduction to myself. I'd like to welcome all the different countries, cultures, different sorts of creative people tonight and the different levels of experience in both creating and selling. So you're all at different levels. And I apologize in advance with my sometimes Anglo-centric expression or bias, but I can't help that because I'm just a little old English lady. But best wishes, and very sincerely, I want to say this, it's best wishes to all who have experienced mental strain and financial hardship um, during COVID. Uh, we've all got our stories, and this is why it's the COVID edition, because I wanted to say this, and just to G you up a bit as well. And 
special thoughts to anyone here who have actually lost loved ones during this pandemic. So uh, warmest regards to you and condolences. I just wanted to say that. So um, what is important to understand before I start bending your brain and upsetting your artistic sensibilities is that I am not, I'm definitely not here to tell you um, what you should or should not create. I am definitely not here to do that. That is entirely up to you. And that's really important to understand <coughs> that. Um, would, would everybody mind just muting, if that's possible? Thank you. Um, what I'm here to do tonight is to question mindsets and get you to start thinking about your approaches to your art and how it relates to selling. Um, so I hope that's been clear for you. So let us begin. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is um, I want you to start thinking, you can start making comments on chat uh, because I shall look at some of those comments. The first thing, and it's, this is the most important question for you. Um, so I've chosen 10 top essentials to get you thinking about your art selling practice. And I will ask you questions. And there may be some surprises and shocks on the way. These are based on nearly 20 years of artists and makers asking me the same questions um, and working very closely with them. So you've got to do a little bit of work today. Um, otherwise, I think it's a little bit pointless. And if you're old fashioned like me, uh, pen and paper might be handy. So uh, remember to type your questions. And if you've just entered uh, in chat, say hello with your name, country, and how you found out about this webinar. So what? Uh, let's have a look at our essential number one. What do you mean by selling? Um, what is your own definition of selling? What do you want selling for you to look like? Why don't you type up some of your responses? What do you mean by selling? What does it look like? So you have to understand what is the acceptable level of selling for you. Um, so it's pointless anybody telling you how to sell at any level if it's not what you want to do. Um, so I could say, do this and do that and you could say but that doesn't interest me and I don't want to do that or I could say um, to make a living you need to do this and you might say but I don't want to make a living from it and um, so the first point the, the top of this um, chart if you like number one is you have to be self-aware you have to know what selling looks like for you. And um, please make any comments if you've got any words or any phrases to let me know what that might mean to you. It means so many different. And when I've been doing my one-to-one -one, um, mentoring, what actually comes out just in that question is quite incredible. Somebody here says, sharing my work with other people so they can enjoy it in their home. Oh, now, I hope, Mari, that's a lovely, lovely comment. The only problem with that, and, um, and you're a great student for me, because you're saying sharing my work with other people. Now it's about making the leap to selling it, because sharing your work doesn't mean selling. So everybody be aware of that and try and think about that one. Try and think about that one. What's the difference between sharing work and getting the fuzzy feeling? Like somebody, oh, that's lovely. Oh, you get that free song. But then that's not selling. So what's the difference? Okay, let's move on. Okay, number two. Another question you need to um, think about is 
Um, why do you want to sell? Why do you want to sell your work? You might think, well, because I want to get money for it. No, really think about that. Why do you want to sell your work? What is it about it that you want to do or feel? Why? So my question to you is, why not sit in your studio or workshop and just create and give your stuff away? <laughs> not on your life. <laughs> And then get a job, you know, what you were doing before or what or do full time what you're doing now or, you know, go and work in a, a vaccination hub or um, a supermarket. You know, why do you want to sell your work? I mean, if you don't need to sell or make money, why do you want to sell your work? Um, if you don't need to make money, then... Is that affecting your ability to sell? That's another thing. So if you don't need, this is a question of need, is that affecting your ability to sell? Do you absolutely love selling? Does it give you a buzz? Does it give you endorsement for your work? Your motivation to sell is central to your selling. Let's have a look at some more of these answers. Selling my work at a profitable rate, a basic, Mari, you've, you've progressed. <laughs> <laughs> a basic living wage, wow, it's, it's ambitious, but it's possible. Nobody's saying that's easy, but well done. That's amazing. To cover my costs and enable me to make a living. Brilliant. I think that's really essential, that covering your costs. When you don't cover your costs, it can be really quite depressing, you know. And just one more now. When people buy my stuff, I feel, oh, yes, this is the endorsement thing. You know, when people buy from you, especially if it's, it's, if it's your own creation, I mean, they've actually used their own hard-earned cash to say your painting or your piece of pottery, whatever, is worth buying and it's such a buzz it's an absolute buzz thank you for those answers amazing so top 10 essentials right number three how is selling your work different from making money think about that one how is selling your work different from making money well selling a piece of art and craft is a tiny part of the story uh, most of us can sell one or two pieces. Most of us can sell one or two pieces. You know, that's not that hard. But to make money is a total new ball game and your mindset has to shift. So you have to think about your audience. Now, this is a really important point here and some of you might not like it, but listen up, right? You have to think about your audience as much as or even more than you think about your own artistic ego. Now I use that word ego, I don't, it's not in a derogatory, um, it's not in a derogatory sense necessarily. Well, not really at all actually. So I'm gonna say that again, you have to think about your audience as much or even more than you think about your own artistic ego. Now here's a key, here's a caveat here, except, except, when the art ego starts to have a monetary value, because we're talking about selling here. We're not talking about having a warm, fuzzy feeling about people appreciating your work. We're talking about selling and have a warm, fuzzy feeling and a buzz because you've sold something. And how do you improve the selling to give you more buzz and to uh, you know, could be a cost and what you've been saying here, you know, make a basic living out of it. So it's got to be more than you having a fuzzy feeling. OK, so I'll say that again to think about, except when the art ego starts to have a monetary value. And I'm going to come on to that a bit more in a little while. So your artistic ego becomes part of your narrative and people start buying into that artistic ego to have a monetary value. OK. Right, let's move on. So number four, I always love this one. Um, 
the time that I've um, spoken to artists about this one, artists and makers, is the time that you take to create your piece a consideration, a factor to consider when pricing your work. Now, I do have a whole session on this um, because it does deserve a whole hour and I'm just going to skip over it, but I want to highlight it because it's a top 10 essential, the way you price your work. And I'm going at it from the time taken and you think yeah yeah of course of course you know it's um definitely well the short answer is no and you you know you might feel a bit indignant now but um okay let me talk about time taken okay so this is a really difficult one so it's only a consideration when you get your audience to care how much time you take First of all, they'll only be caring about the price and they'll only be caring about who you are and whether they like it or they think it's any good. The time taken is whether you can get your audience to care about that. So if you start selling quite well, and I'm sure some of you do already, um, then it becomes part of the narrative of that piece. You've got to make it your narrative. The time taken has got to become part of your narrative, not oh, well, I'm charging you this because I've taken this time and, you know, all <laughs> like that. It's, it's more, this is a special piece and it's taken me, uh, there's more detail in this and this is, um, and I use this technique and that technique and, and this is why it's more money. It has to be part of your narrative. Um, so if you do, so um, there's lots of, also, there's lots of good and bad practice when you do commissions as well. You know, when people say, how much is it? And you say, how long is a piece of string? Because I don't know how long. You really have got to, to have a structure to your commissioned work. And people have to have an idea of how much it's going to cost. Um, so, you know, when you have a, a gardener in or whatever, you want to know how much it's going to cost. So you could pay a gardener £15 an hour and he or she does loads in three hours. And then an, another garden, you, you wouldn't tell that she'd been in the garden and, and you, you paid them three, three hours. Do you see what I'm trying to say to you? People are very conscious about price and the time taken is a very delicate subject and you have to know how to play that properly. But if you say, well, I charge 30 pounds an hour or 20 pounds an hour and that, and that took me six million years. You're not going to sell very much, if you know what I mean. OK, so let's move on. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm marketing my hour on how to price work. And I've done that one quite a few times. And people really get a lot from that. All right. And I sound like I'm boasting, but it, I, I know it's good. I know it's good. I've been doing this for a long time. OK, number five. Um, do you consider selling your work a job or a form of employment? Now, oh, there's Charlene. Look, that's one of my um, um, my artists on my. Let me just move artists on my my website. She's a fabulous uh, coppersmith. Do you consider selling your art a, a job or a form of employment? There's a really good reason. Um, why I ask this question because when you spend loads of time creating and not only creating your work but creating selling opportunities can you see the difference between that creating and creating your selling opportunities that is very time consuming so my question is at what point does that become an occupation if at all, if you want it to be, okay. Um, how important is this to decide? So it might not be important, but you know, for some of you, that's the decision you might want to wait, make, or you've perhaps already made it. And at what point did you do that? That would be interesting for you to tell me that now. If you've made that decision, I'd, I'd love to know anything about that so we can share that. Um, so art and craft 
is notoriously associated with hobby, unfortunately, pleasure, and we all know there's a lot of pain, passion, and sometimes a vocation which can't earn you money. That's the image, isn't it? So, and you'll be very dismayed to hear that it's been recently listed as one of the most unnecessary occupation and that was in the Sunday Times and that's a British newspaper and as you can imagine it caused a lot of upset because obviously then we were seeing in art circles that it was listed towards the top of necessary jobs and uh, I'm sure that you might put it after a doctor or a nurse or a teacher or something like that what we you know this concept of what's necessary and what's oh, not fabulous. in covid times you know it's very topical at the moment um at the very least at some point you have to decide that you are a working artist and maker and your activities have to have status in your opinion and in the opinion, and oh, this is really important, and the opinion of others around you. So let me give you an example. You can't work, okay, if a friend who is on holiday comes round for coffee. You've all been there because you're only an artist and you're doing things that you enjoy. And then people keep <laughs> saying, go away. I'm work. So you've got to be stricter if that's what you want to do. And how do you validate yourself with people close to you? How are you validating what you do? If you don't earn money or if you want to earn money from it. So the people around you are sometimes are as important as what you think yourself. And, you know, I'm sure you've got all sorts of stories about that. Um, I'm sure some of you have a uh, quite a tough time actually uh, but others you have the support that you need and that's brilliant okay number six. Oh, now people have asked me this for nearly 20 years can any art and craft sell wow so what's the answer what do you think actually put, put Put yes or no, what do you think? Come on, put it on chat. Let's see what people are, what are people saying. Can any art or craft sell? No. <laughs> somebody's mute, somebody's like, yeah, no, you reckon, right. Well, I'm gonna challenge that. I'm, I'm gonna say, well, yes, it can really. I mean, I know you say there's really not very accomplished art, but you can still, you, you can pretty much sell, yes, Martin, Vanessa and Mandy say yes. Well, I agree with you, actually. Um, so let me, let me give you, uh, let me ju um, justify that, justify that answer. Well, artists used to come into the gallery and say to me, what sells? If they wanted to sell in the gallery and they say, oh, well, what sells? And you know what, I, I hated that question. I'd absolutely loathe that question because firstly, it showed me that the artist had no concept of how selling worked. And why would they want to know anyway? I was always puzzled by that question. So for example, if they painted trees, okay, and I said, Iguanas are selling at the moment. Would they start painting iguanas? It was a very bizarre question. So the answer, in my mind, the answer merited a whole course on how to sell your art and craft. So successful selling artists have a whole lot in place, a whole load of stuff in place. So the question isn't, can any art and craft sell? The question should be, not what sells, but for example, how can I hone my craft? How can I price my work correctly? Or how can I reach my buyers? Or how can I create a great narrative? 
what are the best ways to sell online or face to face? These are the questions they should have been asking me, not what sells. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, it's it, it's just not giving it the impetus that this whole activity of selling your art and craft is about. It's not what it's about. I hope you agree with that. Um, okay, let's move on. Number seven. Now, this is a bit hard hitting, folks. So um, you may have already been in this situation. Uh, what might it mean if you can't sell your work? So some of you will have already tried to sell your work or some of you may be selling your work well, or you may remember when you couldn't sell your work. Um, and, and it's really demoralizing. It's really demoralizing. Um, so let me answer that question. What might it mean if you can't sell your work? Well, it's quite simply could mean that your chosen audience doesn't like or want your work. And that's really quite simple. Or it could mean, let's do it a bit more positively now, that you haven't found your audience or your target market. It could mean that. Or it could mean your pricing is wrong. It could mean that your approach is putting buyers off. All right. Um, there's a, a webinar that I do about selling face to face and also about, um, there's one about what are the rules, business, how to do business. Uh, business, when you do business, it's very ethical. You've got to do ethical business. And people buy you, not just your artwork, but they also buy into you and your narrative, you see. So, and I think you know that. And so, it's your approach, because you might be, you might not have any confidence, um, or you might be a bit self-deprecating, or there's all different ways that, and sort of ways that you might be, that might be misinterpreted. So your approach might be putting buyers off, because I've, I've seen that, I've seen it, because I observe a lot when I go to art fairs and craft fairs, I stand near stands, very annoyingly, <laughs> and I listen and I watch and I see what the artists and makers do and how they put buyers off. <laughs> buyers who want to buy and who are just about to buy something and they put them off. So um, it's very frustrating to watch that, but um, I can tell you more about that if you sign, sign up, sorry. <laughs> And, and pay attention but um it could it could be that you are not reaching your audience either face to face or digitally that's frustrating isn't it the digital side of it how do you get to your buyers digitally um it could mean and this is really really important that you don't have an interesting narrative you don't you haven't worked out what your artist narrative narrative is and if you have worked it out you're not communicating it um i'm not saying any of this is true about anybody listening here today but i'm giving possible reasons why you might not be selling your work or find it very difficult to do that and i, I like this phrase that i often use is yes this, this phrase is you see with your eyes with your own eyes, but you don't see with the eyes of the other. Have a think about that. You may be brilliant at seeing with the eyes of the other. I'm not saying you're not good at that, but it's about empathy. It's about listening and it's about appreciating how other people see things. So, and obviously we all know that people haven't got much money. And so if people haven't got, do you sit there and lament or do you adapt and think of different ways to use your art to earn money? 
I hope you found that helpful. Um, I mean, how many times so frustrated people like my art, but no one bought it. Think about all those things I've just said and have a look at my um, coaching sessions because I, I do go into detail about a lot of those issues. I hope you're finding this useful. You'll perhaps, <laughs> you'll perhaps, you'll perhaps see that. So I've never heard such a load of twaddle in my whole life, but I've been doing it for a long time. And, and um, yeah, I've helped quite a lot of, well, hundreds actually of artists and makers get over certain blocks and barriers. Okay, let's move on. Okay, um, I haven't skipped one, have I? Have we got any more questions? I'd love to have some questions. Right, number eight. What might it mean if you are not making a profit? Not making a profit. Somebody said they want to make a profit. And profit's not a dirty word, okay? There's a lot of um, negativity when people talk about profit in the media you have to make profits businesses have to make profits the reason they have to make profits is because they have to they have to pay themselves or pay their staff and develop their businesses and reinvest in their businesses they have to make profit so it could mean the following if you are not making a profit um, that you have no idea if you are making a profit, that could be true because you don't know how to work it out easily. Or perhaps you don't care about profits. Now, if you don't care about profits, well, that's brilliant. <laughs> but, you know, then you don't complain that you don't make a profit. So if it's not important to you, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, thank you, Vanessa. Like, you know, like somebody says to you, oh, your work is lovely and I want to buy it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Brilliant snippets there. Thank you so much, Vanessa. I really do appreciate that. Since I can't hear you or see you. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, so, yes, but if you do want to make a profit, I've got a really good session on how to make a profit. <laughs> I, and I do numbers with you and you go, oh, oh, gulp. oh, really? Um, um, so what could it mean if you're not making the profit? Well, it means you're not, char you're not, you're either not charging enough or your costs to make your item are too high. And then you're saying, but I haven't got any choice. Because, well, then improve your narrative and chug your costs up then. You, you've got to make it work. So. Um, it could be that your pieces don't match your audience. I've gone on about that. You know, pieces matching your audience is absolutely crucial. And uh, for any of those reasons, I'm afraid your piece is commercially unviable. There you go. Your pieces are commercially unviable. If you haven't got these things in place, if you're charging too little, it's taking you too long to make something and you're not charging for it, but you can't charge for it because people don't care how much time you've spent. So therefore you have to have a great narrative and you have to weave the time taken into your artist narrative. <laughs> you've got to think how you're going to justify those prices to make it worth your while and to make a profit. But if you don't care about profit, then it doesn't matter, does it? Okay. You just like selling, it gives you a buzz. Well, that's a different conversation and, and that's a good conversation as well. Okay, let's move on. Oh, we're getting near the end now. Number nine, okay. Um, why do artists... Yes, here we go. Um, selling and making profits. Now, I found this so much with artists and makers with their exhibitions and things like that and it's a real this, I've seen some artists and makers sell and they're better at it than I am you know they're just real business people um so I'm not creating a stereotype here artists and makers are people and you have varying degrees of success and ability with selling but there is a general feeling in artist communities 
that we don't like talking about selling and making money. And there are barriers to this, I've found. So why do artists and makers find it difficult to sell their work and make money is my question. Well, somebody's, oh, oh, you know what? That's such a good question. Uh, I don't know whether you pronounce your name Mari or Marie, but Mari, I'll, I'll say Mari. If you increase your prices of pieces you already make, will customers <laughs> say that? <laughs> I think, you know, if you keep, right, the trick is you've got to keep being visible online and face-to-face. -face. You've got to get people to recognise you. You've got to do your time. And yes, I believe they will accept it. And your narrative, well, I'd like to look at your narrative. Okay, I do, here we go. I do a whole hour on creating a narrative. Okay, mm -hmm. and I also do one-to-one -one on narratives so I can write your narrative for you. So I've written hundreds of narratives for artists and makers. And it's not just me writing paragraphs. It's um, what it is, is, is a discussion uh, and exploration about your journey hate that word never mind uh well, you know what's come before what you're doing now and how that's going to inform your work um I, I get what you're saying Mari but I do think they will accept it if you are confident about what you're doing you're producing work which is a cohesive body of work and there's a good narrative and you talk to people and you empathize with people and you are unapologetic. I hope that helps, Mari. I hope that helps. Uh, yes, I agree with you, Joe. Yeah, I found that if as an artist you undervalue your work, then so will the buyers. Absolutely right. But you know what? It's the same with anything. I mean, I suppose it was only a couple of three years ago that I started to value my work. I was thinking, ah, hang on a minute. You know, I've had 20 years of this. I've got a master's degree. You know, I'm charging you a tenner an hour. And actually that's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap. And I agree with you, Joe. Yeah, don't undervalue your work. I think a tenner an hour, I'm actually undervalued. Thank you, Joe. You've just advised me actually. I'm not going to, I'm going to charge 20. <laughs> but you're quite right. I think, I think you're absolutely right. But you can't be deluded about your work, though, folks. You cannot be deluded about your work. We need good quality work that you can value and that everybody else, if people are, are starting to buy it, don't undervalue work. Right. We've got, what if you produce multiple items which are different? Oh, now I'd like to um, talk to you about that. Um, you, this is not a problem, but you really do need to, um, there is an argument for segmenting if you produce completely different things. Either there is a theme that runs through everything and you can tell that it's you but really you do need to segment and to have uh you know some have got shops on my website and it, there's too much there's too much it, there's no cohesive body of work um so it is good to segment but that can all the stuff that you do can be in your narrative but when you are presenting yourself if you make it too cluttered Right. So I'm a very orderly person. If you go, if you're an orderly person, you go into a cluttered room, you don't like it. Your audience cannot be confused. Do not confuse your audience. I'd love to spend more time on that because I've got, you know, I could talk to you to the cows come home on, on that particular on that particular topic. That was TM. OK, thank you very much. Um, so let's come back to this. Um, well, the two main reasons that there are barriers is the artists, are, they, they lack confidence sometimes and they're self-deprecating. Um, or the opposite, I've witnessed quite a number of times, is that they have an arrogance which excludes prospective purchasers from engaging. So because they have a set view of what their buyer should look and sound like. 
and that they miss sales doing that actually um another reason and this is going back to the narrative is they confuse their narrative you know there's them talking about their work to another artist or talking to their family or talking to somebody about their work and they confuse that with um and when they start selling and they, they're saying about their work, they confuse it with boasting. But it's not boasting. So they forget. So some artists, they forget the difference between an appreciator of their work and a prospective buyer. And those two things are completely different. So a prospective buyer can also be an appreciator. Well, we hope so. But an appreciator isn't necessarily a buyer. And you have to start making a distinction between those two things. Because if you're at a show, you don't waste too much time on the appreciators. You need to be spending time with your prospective buyers. If that makes sense. And um, you also confuse um, you just talking about your work and getting all passionate about it, and which you should be, um, and um, a selling narrative. And your passion goes into the selling narrative, but the selling narrative is there very much to satisfy your audience. It's what your audience wants to hear. And that's very different. So do you remember right at the beginning, I said, you've got to have more, think more about your audience than your own ego. We've all got egos. You know, I'm not afraid to say the word ego. We've all got egos. I mean, my ego is the size of Bournemouth sometimes. You know, you, 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 it's just one of those things. And you have to think about your audience. Um, okay, so let's try and, try and think about your own barriers. And I've got that... Um, coaching session about selling face to face which um you might find interesting it goes into the psychology of selling a bit and uh okay let's move on and the last one now so um have we got any more questions no are we all right yeah okay um so I've cheated. I've cheated on this one a bit because I just couldn't resist doing, giving you all these tips. I couldn't resist it. Um, so it's, it's basically my top 10 essential. It's number 10. Is It's this overview of what you really need to sell and cover costs and make profits. And I've done it in a few bullet points. There you go. You can go away now and earn millions. <laughs> So um, you really do need, I keep going on about this, um, an artist narrative. An artist will make a narrative or crafter. I hope I've got some crafters here as well. That would be lovely. Um, an artist narrative, which is communicated <coughs> and very importantly, a work routine. Try and get some rigor to your working day. Um, I would say on a mixture of online and physical selling, especially now, hasn't the world changed? Um, understanding who your audience and target market is, really important. Pricing your work correctly, it is really at the top there. And understanding the difference between you as a creative and you as a selling artist. There's a difference. Mm. You put another little hat on, you'll have two hats. And the selling artist will have the creative artist, it's like a smaller hat, and then you, your selling artist hat will be bigger and it'll come over the top of it. <laughs> and really importantly, and I've only alluded to this very briefly, it's honing your craft and developing a cohesive style. You have to make sense to your buyers, your prospective buyers. They, they're kind of interested in your experimental work. Other artists and makers are interested in your experimental work, but most prospective buyers are interested in finished product. 
So don't confuse them too much with experiment. That is my advice, take it or leave it. Um, but as I say, I've been doing it enough years to, to know that people don't like, to, or your audience doesn't like to be confused. Um, no, I don't. Somebody says, do you have any suggestions for selling posters online? I'm not quite sure what you mean there, Eileen. Is that your artwork on the posters? Well, there's many, many um, marketplaces to sell posters. Um, you know, a, a real fast selling place is Amazon. I mean, I've got an Amazon shop and that, that's a different you know it's a it's very strict selling on amazon is like real straight jacket um but um eileen you might like to just um uh, drop me a line there um uh, so you can explain to me fully what you mean by that um but certainly posters anything that's reproduction anything that you can produce from your art i have um artists on my um my marketplace who produce merchandise so they have their artwork on lots of different things, which I, I mean, some of you might not like that, but I think it's just amazing. I just think it's really mm -hmm. fun. I just love it. I absolutely love artists and makers who do merchandise. <laughs> so you might be talking more about merchandise there, Eileen. I'm not quite sure, but I uh, hope I can help <laughs> in some way. Um, but you know, honing your craft and developing a cohesive style. I think um, if you haven't done that, just get onto that. Get onto that right away, I would say. Um, I think, um, yes, I the eight coaching sessions that I do, the last one I do is a real, it's a bit like this, but it's actually going into all the things that you can do and giving you more precise detail so it's less it's a bit less soul searching because I've been a bit soul searching with you tonight so um it's an advanced the last one session eight is an advanced coaching session with which gives a complete overview of selling you know it goes on about marketing campaigns and things like you know it really takes it, it takes it up a notch a little bit and talking a bit about brands and things like that um okay so i think well i hope you've enjoyed it i've been ranting on i do like more of a discussion but you know i'm sorry about that so there you go there you go um oops let me just get rid of that right okay so um, there it is um the top 10 essentials that's what we've been doing tonight um if you i'm not going to read them all out that would be totally boring but um just looking at this this banner i've got here that's uh, one of the ladies there susie lidston with the face masks on she she's just um she's just got every single sort of merchandise with her artwork on she's a fine artist and um she have a look her up on my website susie. she's just She's just had a, a hairbrush done <laughs> with, I think, fox gloves on the back. So that's her latest. And this is a, a, the, the world of Katya Timoshenko. She was the first artist I invited to my first gallery. She's a superb, she's a superb artist. And um, I sold a lot of her original work. Um, I've got some of I've got some of her stuff actually. It's not it's not the happiest of imi images. <laughs> her images are happy, but um, so yes, hope hope that's been useful for you. Those are the the ten things that um, that I've been through tonight. Sorry, I'm faltering a bit now. Um, so yes, here concludes the free webinar, folks. And thank you so much. Um, we've noted all your questions. And um, if I can just show you now, if you're interested at all, there I am. Now that was it. Oh, that was, this is way before, I was a bit younger there actually, pre-COVID. 
this was at Blenheim Palace when I went to see Ludovico Einaudi. That was a love, oh God, it was idyllic, that concert. It was fantastic. Um, so there you go. There's my email if you wanted to drop me a line. Um, there's the link. Sorry, you can't click on it. Sorry about that. Um, and you, you can read all about me again, uh, my profile, and read the details. It's very detailed what you will do in each of the coaching sessions. And then I'd like to tell you about my artist narrative service. So if you're a little bit bewildered and you don't know who you are or what you are, <laughs> join the club. <laughs> then I can help you with that. I've just completed one, actually. Oh, yes, there's so many interests in Hinder. Do you think that making prints of your art is a better way to sell your art, uh, to make it? But um, I mean, my short answer to that is yes. <laughs> That's what I could say. You've got to find ways of making your art uh, more um, attainable for people. Um, it can make it more valuable. We have to be really careful of that. So you do open edition, um, limited edition. Limited edition will make it more valuable. Uh, but um, to actually use your prints to try and sell those and to make your original work more valuable if you see what I mean um oh bless you Tamara yes um yes well I did a nice thing about you Tamara didn't I in a magazine um you need to be more narrative about me uh, yes um I I get that um have a word with me if you want me to do your narrative. Have the original and make it really special to own. Yes, that's it. Of course. You've got the right idea, Hinder. That's absolutely right. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, thank you, Gabriella. Thanks a lot. Valuable advice. I do try. <laughs> I do try. But if you would like to take advantage of my narrative, it does cost quite a bit of money, though, because... It's at least at least four or five hours work for me, sometimes six hours work at least. I have to be very focused when I do it. And, and so I, you know, uh, have a, um, you do a, a, I do a fact find with you to start and then I do a bit of research on you. And then I talk to you, we do a Zoom together and I have a chat with you about everything. And then I go away and I produce something and you edit it and then send it back. And then I produce the document. So Oh, thank you. A wonderfully honest and cheerful. <laughs> you have to be cheerful these days. <laughs> you have to be cheerful. This is why it's the COVID edition. So I can cheer you all up. So love to hear from you. It's £55 actually. And it's, that's cheap actually. I'm underselling myself. You know what? I'm underselling myself. I, am, I should, it should be at least double. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. I really appreciate that. And if I saw you and heard you, I'm sure I would think you are a super lovely person also. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's about it. Does anybody want to say anything that... Um, yes, I would... Oh, it'd be lovely if you... Yeah, I need to earn some money, folks. I mean, actually, they're quite well attended, my, my webinar. So uh, that would be great. Um, you know, you can still book, even if you can't attend, and then I can send a recording to you. You know, it's worth a tenner. You know, I'll always record. Um, and also, they're smaller, so we keep the... Um, I don't mute you and we can see you if you want. So um, these narratives I create, they're in English as well. So, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so you'll receive an email from me now, details and links, and thank you all for your participation and hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you could give me a testimonial by email, that would be marvellous. And goodbye, everybody. I wonder if...